So I want to end with one story. And the story is this. There was a little boy, his name was Robert. His parents called him Bob C. for short. He lived in Phoenix, Arizona. And when he was six years old, he woke up one night in terrible pain, couldn't get it to stop. They took him to the hospital. They discovered he had terminal cancer. And uh, they said, you've got maybe six weeks, seven weeks to live. And if you can imagine, if you were a parent, you heard that about your child, you'd be very distressed. But the parents were very much like the parents that we talked about with Roger Crawford, where they said, look, nobody can do everything, but, you know, we believe in you. Look, we asked, they asked him a question, what did you want to be when you grew up? And he said, well, I wanted to be a fireman. And so they went to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They said, we've got a son, he's going to die. We're wondering if you could give him a ride on a fire truck so he could have his dream come true in a kind of a minor way. And the Phoenix Fire Chief, who I've later gotten to know since we learned the story, said, look, we'll do better than that lady. We're going to make him chief of the fire department for a whole day. Wow. Said, you give us his measurements, we're going to give him a hat that says chief, we're going to get a slicker, and rain boots, the whole deal, and we'll make it to fit his size. So a week later, they show up at the hospital, and they bring him down, and a guy named Fireman Bob, Bob's his namesake in a sense, they put him on the back of a hook and ladder truck, and they took him out on a fire call that day, three fire calls that day, and he got to see all the things they would normally see. And the chief was not, you know, pejorative or condescending. He always say, well, Bob, see, this is what we normally do. Boom, 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 we tell him all. But you're the chief, what do you think? He'd say, sounds good, do it. <laughs> and so he'd watch all this. And the news crews came, and they saw this kid, and they interviewed him. He ended up being on the 10 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, and all that. And he gets back to the hospital, and he's watching himself on the news. He had a great day. Now, he went on to live a couple months longer than anyone ever thought he would because they think, partially, this was such a powerful experience. But eventually, his vital signs did all begin to wane. And they said, you know, we've got to bring the parents in. They called him up. And then the head nurse said, let's call the fire department, see if we can get a fireman to come over and just stand by his bedside to remind him of this victory he had in his life. And so they called the fire department. They said, look, we'll do better than that. We'll be there in about 15 minutes. Tell you what, um, open his third floor window because they knew where his room was. And we're going to come in by hook and ladder. <laughs> And tell the hospital patients we don't want to freak them out like there's some emergency. So they went on the intercom. And about 15 minutes later, five or six firemen came up through the ladder into his room. And they actually picked him up with his parents' permission. And they were rocking him. And he looks up at the chief and he says, Chief, does this mean I'm a real fireman? And the chief looks down and said, Bob, see, you were always a real fireman, son. You go to God now and feel rested and know that you're a fireman for life. And he died a few minutes later. Now, I tell you that story for two reasons. Number one, we're all touched by a story like that. Why? Because here's a boy who had what? His dream come true. And we'll do anything we can for a child to have their dream come true because we really value the children. But here's the deal. Tonight, you're going to be brushing your teeth, and you're going to be looking in the mirror, and you're going to stop for a minute like you don't normally do, and you're going to look in your eyes. And you're going to see behind those eyes are another pair of eyes. It's the little Bobsy that lives in you, the little child in you that also has dreams. And I want you to stop and take a moment and make a commitment to that child that you will do whatever it takes for their dream to come true, just like you would do for your own child. And if you do that, and you make that commitment, and you apply these principles, I promise you the best is still yet to come for your life. You can have anything you want. Just work the principles. High self-esteem, high peak performance, complete joy. It's your birthright. You deserve it. Claim it.